everybody. Welcome again to another episode of Disability Perspective. I've got a uh, friendly co-host today, Terry Hansen. And Terry, uh, you know our guests probably as well as anybody here, so why don't you go ahead and introduce our guests. Well, Dave and I have been uh, fishing, and uh, he's done a lot of hunting, but we've done fishing and stuff together with Capable Partners. This is Dave Guzzi, officially known as Guzzi. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and uh, Dave, you're here to tell us about, well, where you're working, and uh, why don't you give us a little breakdown of where it is, what it is, and then what it does for people with disabilities. So I'm with the Minnesota Valley Refuge Friends Group, and what we do is uh, provide opportunities for all individuals, uh, but our primary f uh, focus at this juncture is kids programs K through eight. Sure, okay. And what uh, I like to say is we provide an outdoor living science classroom for them. Okay. So as an example, we've done a, a watershed program with the Bloomington Richfield School District where we bust in on several occasions about 80 kids. Okay. And they'll bring some paraprofessionals with them. We'll break up into groups of eight or 10 and we go off in little mini adventures in yeah. and around the Minnesota Valley. And because I'm in a chair, uh, the place that we pick uh, for that is completely accessible. Well, that's very nice. And which location is that? That is at the Bloomington Visitor Center. Okay. And we have another visitor center, which is also 100% uh, accessible. That's in the Carver Rapids Lake unit. Nearest town is called Carver, Minnesota. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so you, you're geared towards kids, but you get kids of all abilities, though. So. Kids of all abilities, oh, adults of all abilities, really. Um, and that's one of the other things that we're next step for us is to partner with an assisted living campus. Oh, okay. And we will pay for the transportation for those uh, participants, adults, to come down and utilize either the visitor center, which is uh, again accessible. The bathrooms have been remodeled, so they are uh, attendant friendly as okay. well. And um, we have bird feeders that are, are re uh, replenished daily. Okay. So that's uh, all accessible. And uh, you've been out to the observation deck. Yep. On uh, decent weather days, that's really a wonderful place to be. Yeah, you get out there and I was seeing species of birds I don't think I've ever seen before in my life. Right. And that that's a really cool experience out there. And with the assisted living adults, it gives them the opportunity to be to be able to get out in nature for one thing and to have activities so they're not just sitting around the house all day basically. Right. You know, I, I uh, spent a year of my life and I'm not going to venture to guess what Terry might have done. Uh, living in a place other than your own home, but um, I know what those four walls look like, and it's yeah. pretty bleak. And uh, that uh, the opportunity just to number one get on a bus is kind of fun. Yeah, and to be able to be outside is also kind of fun. And then to see some critters that you may or may not have ever seen before is pretty neat too. Yeah, I saw a lot of gophers that day. Yes, that I don't normally see in my neighborhood. So. Right. Terry, um, you've known Dave for a while. What about what he does have, have you been familiar with? Well, I haven't been on one of those. I've been on a couple of the uh, uh, fishing piers that have been put out. I don't know that that's your organization, but uh, those are really nice. I had uh, some goddaughters and their kids. I took them out. Uh, we went onto a pier, and they caught a bunch of little fish and had a great time, and I, any time I can fish, is a good time. Right. So um, I know you had talked years ago about trout fishing, and uh, I'm not sure the old uh, arm would hold up very long for that type. I'm more of walleye, either jigging or bobber fishing. That's good for me. But you can sit and fish and watch the birds and the gophers and that kind of stuff at the same time and catch fish. So that's what I would be interested in. The Well, our Bass Ponds unit uh, and it, this is all Googleable. If you just went Minnesota Valley Bass Ponds, you can find it. The, that dock actually, Capable Partners helped make uh, and improve it to be 100% accessible. Okay. Oh. About 
boy, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. We okay. put money in for that. Okay. And um, we'll bring kids out there. Uh, the culmination of one of their events is, uh, and Capable Partners paid for that too. Uh, we uh, present them with a fishing rod and a little, mm -hmm. little box of tackle. Yep. And um, I tell everybody that's a helper, please wear eye protection. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, and and uh, smash the barb on the hook. So yep. uh, if it does go in some place you don't want it, you can get it out. Exactly. Yeah. But yes. the kids are down there, and the Department of Natural Resources, if it's in their time frame or uh, availability, they will stock those ponds. Okay. So that's right in near Bloomington. Hmm. Okay. And um, so the, I believe there it must be a, like a catch and release program though. Or well, are they permitted to when keep I've a taken field? kids out, I always make it catch and release. <laughs> um, and Terry and I have been on a couple of those trips together. Uh, although I think one little boy demanded that he bring his prize bass home with him. And <laughs> I we think if, we allowed it. if they can figure out how to clean them, they'd like to take fish right? and that stuff. But we don't really have that. Uh, some of the places that I've been, they don't have that facility. And right. they certainly don't want you leaving right. the leavings any, player, any place around on their property. So it would depend on if they want to take it home and clean them themselves right. and that stuff. So when I went with my uh, goddaughter's kids, uh, we didn't keep any fish. So they brought... Uh, breakfast sandwiches down we spread everything out on the on the deck and we're eating and fishing and eating and fishing and that was pretty good <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun but they you know they caught some sunfish about this big and uh, the, the one the youngest one was eight years old and I just gave them ice fishing rods so she's just sitting on her feet are dangling in and she's just jigging it just perfectly and caught one and she was just ecstatic <laughs> it's just way too much fun to watch that so yeah, that, that, that is good. That first discovery when they actually catch the fish. Yes, yep, yep. So, um, what kind of programs do you guys offer out there for everybody? I mean, between kids, adults, disabled? Yeah, sure. We, um, we have uh, what we call friends events where uh, we'll have folks come and do uh, tour the art gallery. Okay. Um, and we'll provide snacks and beverages for those. That's all on our uh, event calendar. Um, the other, some of the other things that we've done in the past is um, uh, we could, you can come to the visitor center and utilize snowshoes oh. at free of charge. Okay. We have a bookstore that's uh, well stocked with little trinkets that we would like you to consider purchasing. Okay. Um, all those proceeds go back to the Fish and Wildlife Service. And so our nonprofit is, uh, does have an executive director. 80% of the monies that come in are redistributed back out into the community. Okay. So that uh, it's pretty well run in that respect that it gets more most of the proceeds back into the programs. I think we're, for the size we are um, and being on their board now, I think this is my seventh year and, and my last. Um, I'm going to make room for those younger people to get up and yeah. get involved. That's good. You, you mentioned the snowshoes. Well, it, uh, that rental had to been a little low this year <laughs> because uh, we've had one of our milder winters. Couldn't tell by looking outside today, but yeah. Know. So we had a, well, we actually had a hybrid event and we couldn't use snowshoes, but uh, they set up a candlelight okay. or a um, little accessible walking trail sure. in and around the visitor center. And then we provided hot cocoa. That was Saturday night. You guys missed out. Yeah. And, and, and uh, kettle corn. Very nice. And, and there's little stations broken out. And typically these are families that'll come. Mm -hmm. And they have little, what I call little uh, learning pods about where you can learn about uh, pelted animals or birds okay. or uh, some of the, I call them weeds, but I mean are the prairie plants that right. are still there and in the bottoms and other, uh, you know, critters that are resident in the area. And how did your organization um, get the land that they're operating on? It was the donated, the was it already federal land? Sure, I can talk about that. Uh, I think it was the very first 300 and 
80 acres were uh, signed into law when uh, Mark Dayton was still Senator Mark Dayton. Okay. Uh, that was 1983, four. Okay. Something of that nature, <laughs> if I remember correctly. We started with 380 acres. And um, because of a, a lawsuit against the Minnesota Airport Commission for noise abatement, mm -hmm. when they extended a runway, um, we received, the federal government received a check for $26 million that went into a trust. And with smart investing, um, that money is still about $25 million. But uh, the proceeds from that initial investment have procured 14,000 plus acres. Wow. And okay. so we really start or end, depending on how you look at it, at the confines of the Mississippi River, mm -hmm. which is closest to Fort Snelling State sure. Park. And then we go all the way upriver into Belle Plaine. Okay. That's quite a, quite a nice uh, area then. And it, it, is all of that park accessible, all that land accessible to visitors in general? It is, um, there are areas, uh, the trail systems are all accessible uh, okay. for, I'll just call it, we'll start with able-bodied folks. Sure. Okay. Um, and through sort of a hybrid funding program through the Department of Natural Resources mm -hmm. and the state of Minnesota, they are putting in hard surfaces. Okay. And those hard surfaces are going to be friendly for road bikes, Mm -hmm. wheelchairs, mm -hmm. rollerblading, okay. et cetera. And um, so then we're, I would call us 100% ADA compliant. There's other trails in other parts of the valley just due to the nature of uh, being in a uh, terrain right. in rich area that it is not gonna be wheelchair friendly. Right. But I would say the potential is for at least three quarters of it to be accessible. Okay. Which is really unique. Um, and plus we are the nation's largest urban based refuge. And oh, by the way, everything's free of charge. <laughs> Can't complain about the price then. No. Terry, you got anything for him? Well, I was just gonna say, that talking with that path, we were down in Florida one time and went into a refuge that was, uh, it was like a dock. It was all wooden uh, slats, and so you're bouncing around, and it, it went for, it seemed miles that we wheeled around in there. And uh, do, uh, birds and plants that I had no idea what they were, and I've forgotten any of them now, but it was really neat to see that. But that was, uh, that's before I got the power assist on my chair. So we were pretty tuckered by the time the day was over. But, um, they had spots to pull off and explain, you know, what was there and everything like that. So it sounds like the same kind of deal, but the hard surface would be easier, of course, to wheel on. Oh, absolutely. As opposed to the, and there sometimes there were some slats missing that you had to hop over, and that's so it was kind of interesting that way too. But uh, yeah. it's this sounds like s somewhat the similar thing. The the biggest challenge that we have is because we're in a floodplain. Sure. Um, the hydrologists would call it river bounce. And uh, when we get those flood conditions, we get to a point where uh, nobody can get down there. Yep. And then for a bit afterwards, there might be some mud flat problems until the equipment can get in and scrape things back down to the trail. Okay. Um, and given that, what is there a lot of upkeep money to go towards the dock areas and the places that I'd been out there, um, you know, if, if a rail breaks or whatever, or just age has gotten to them. Some of that comes out of the regular funding from the Fish and Wildlife. Um, anything that's, um, I would say most of it actually comes out of the regular uh, funding. Um, and there's been, like I said, the one couple of the different dock systems for the wheelchair access was paid for by uh, another nonprofit that was capable partners at the time. Okay. And then we've contributed, our friends group have contributed some of the monies for that as well. But the great majority comes up right from the fish and wildlife budget. Okay. So it is, is somewhat of a group effort, but again, the majority comes from fish and wildlife. Okay. 
you intimated to us earlier before we started shooting that there's something coming up in the next year you said there's right some good uh, changes yeah the uh from our B bloomington visitor center and i don't know the exact elevation change but i'm mm -hmm. going to guess it's probably 80 or 90 feet okay. differential from our visitor center down to the bottom of the trail um, once the hard trail surface is uh, being put in uh, ultimately we're going to have a connection between those two elevation changes that'll be compliant okay not that we'll want to push it <laughs> right but it'll be pushable Okay. The one they had uh, up on Islands of Peace on the Mississippi right. had that uh, a lot of fun going down. Switchbacks. Switchbacks. That's what I was looking for. Uh, we uh, went down there one time and uh, ran into about three deer. Right. And they took off. I could not believe the noise that they made on that, on that blacktop path and across the wooden bridge and that. But uh, that was back before I had the power assist, and that was definitely hauling your tackle box and their rods back up there was definitely a, a chore. They always say, well, how can you guys go fish for eight or ten hours? I said, if you worked as hard as we did getting to and from the water, you need ten hours in between. <laughs> Just to rebuild that strength, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Well, and, you know, as we age, I'll be 66 in a bit. and I'll, Just I'm a not kid. Gonna, just a kid. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not, I won't ask either of you <laughs> how your age is, but, but as we age, uh, adding power assist to your chair is, for me, has been a life changer. Yeah, oh, certainly. Um, you said there, there's some upcoming programs in the spring and summer coming up for everybody that visits? Yeah, the uh, event, again, it'll be on our event calendar, but we're going to do uh, more uh, friends organized events and it'll okay. be come and meet and greet and we will it, you know, if i'm going to uh, host it i'll make sure that it's accessible okay and um, some of the greatest places i think for access of are either of the visitor center and their immediate trail systems around them mm -hmm. and then the uh, old cedar bridge uh, area and okay. it, that is anybody that's lived in minneapolis st paul and started driving a car in the 70s or sooner probably drove across the old Cedar Avenue Bridge. At, at some point or another, yeah. Right, and uh, that has been uh, repurposed, and it's a uh, walk, rollover, non-automobile kind of bridge now, and we utilize that for a lot of our uh, gatherings. Okay. Dirt? Just, I used to work at the County Highway Department, and I remember the uh, Cedar Bridge always having to worry in the spring if that was underwater or you know do we have to block that off or not but I haven't been down there uh, to see it now that would be uh, be interesting I, a lot of those things I just learned over the radio I was a dispatcher and uh, would have to send somebody down and check on the Cedar Avenue bridge yep it's underwater okay <laughs> let's block that off so well and I presume you still have that issue from time to time especially around spring melt and all that yes it's um i think the easiest way is to go on to the website and, and figure it out if we're we're open or or uh, the trail system is open or not yeah and what is the website it um ours is uh, uh if you just google minnesota valley refuge friends okay dot org all right you'll find us all right and if you just google the minnesota valley refuge It'll take You'll it find out. us. All right. We'll make sure that's on the screen for our uh, viewers to see. Now, um, so you have a couple of events coming up, spring and summer. What are other things to watch for as the seasons change out there? It's got to be pretty wild, different flora or animals come through. Is yeah, I think as the floodwaters drop, uh, probably the best viewing times are, uh, I think, maybe uh, May 1st through the end of June, and you'll have things like uh, the painted turtles. Okay. So turtle painted turtles will ha uh, they'll um, the hatchlings will hatch in the fall. Okay. And they'll bury themselves in the mud, or go down on the bottom of a water feature and hide. 
Okay. And then they hibernate underwater that whole winter, just the little guys. And they'll be about all oh, the size of an old silver dollar. And I just dated myself, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, they'll be uh, much uh, about the size of a 50 cents piece. And I still dated myself. But in any case, uh, those you can identify, you can uh, pick them up by the side, turn them on the bottom, and they're brilliantly colored. Okay. Uh, they're actually leaving the water and going to try and find something to eat. Okay. And uh, boy, the garter snakes are out roaming around and all kinds of things in the spring. I can do without that. Yeah, well, just remember they're not going to hurt you. Oh, yeah. Hurt. Just don't the hurt them. The returning waterfall and okay. then. Um, you know, somewhere around uh, mid-May to the end of May, uh, fawns are going to be b uh, being born. Okay. Now, do you get... Um, like, what type of waterfowl do you get? It Swan, duck? Uh, we'll get uh, greater and lesser ca uh, Canada geese. We'll get um, swans. Boy, just about every variety of puddle duck known to Minnesota. Um, but primarily you'll get mallards, blue winged teal, wood ducks, and shovelers, I think are the primary okay. species that'll come back through the area. Do you get any cranes down in that area at all? We get some, but if you really want to see a, a crane show in Minnesota, you go to Sherbur National Wildlife Refuge, and that's almost second to none. It's incredible. Okay. And um, what? And you stock the ponds there with the fish, correct? Uh, the uh, DNR does. DNR does. And many species, there's a walleye, sunfish. Well, I think, unfortunately, there probably are, are the old-fashioned sun, sunfish, pumpkin okay. seeds. That's well. generally what's stocked. But what's in there is also catfish, bullhead, uh, northern. Okay. And you know, they pull it up, take a picture, and put her back, right? <laughs> if that's that, the way if, you would do it. If that, yeah, that's the way I'd do it. Okay. Okay. Unless Terry's cleaning it. <laughs> no. We'd get pretty hungry if you waited for me to clean a fish. <laughs> <laughs> you like catching them, just don't like cleaning them. I don't like cleaning them, and I don't like eating them, but I'll catch them all day long. <laughs> well, you know, you know, properly fried, I'll probably walleye me too. all day long. <laughs> But I'm with you. I, I won't clean it myself. But my, my nephew does all the fishing in the family, and he brings back plenty. And he's, he's got himself a couple of trophy sizes, and, but he does the right thing. He takes a picture and sends them back. So. Now, um, do you have daily activities out there, or what, what's the like the day-to-day -day out there outside of the big group meetings and such? Um, well, our visitor center... Uh, Unfortunately, uh, due to federal uh, constraints in, in funding, mm -hmm. um, they, we are only open to the public Thursdays, in, uh, to the buildings are open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 10 to 4. Okay. Um, open to the public, uh, that's the indoor spaces. The outdoor spaces are open, I think, from, you know, sunrise to eight, nine o'clock at night. Okay. And you, you say that it's open public, you know, they can walk the trails, whatnot. But given the time constraints, is it policed in any way? We, uh, we are uh, understaffed in that particular <laughs> area, for sure. Yes, we have a couple of enforcement officers, uh, but they work cooperatively with the other communities. Okay. Okay. You just ring a bell and it's time to leave at the park? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in uh, Japan, when anything was over or about to be over, you'd hear Old Lang Syne being played over at any loudspeaker and everybody except me knew that it was it time was. to leave. <laughs> and everybody would go, so I'd just go with them. But it was something on that order, I suppose, you could do. And, and uh, that was like out at camp when it was lunchtime, the big, they rang the big bell and you knew what to do. Yeah, that's what we need to do, there get a go. bell. Yep, <laughs> yep. Just put a little speaker out there and ring a bell in it and say, yes. closing time, folks, yep. time to go home. You don't have to stay here, but you got to be somewhere else. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, now, 
really appreciate hearing about this. You get the dip, you get the four days a week basically that are open to the public with the buildings. Yes. What will they find in the buildings? What do you change displays on a seasonal basis or? Um, in our bookstore, uh, the inventory does somewhat change uh, in terms of the bird feeders. The thing, biggest thing that changed are the birds of the season. Okay. Um, the juncos are uh, actually uh, people that talk about northern birds that, that migrate down into our part of uh, Minnesota, southern Minnesota. Is one of them is called a junco. Okay. That's uh, more of a Canadian nesting bird or way up north kind of nesting bird. We didn't see many of them at the feeders this year. Mm, and okay. I'm no, uh, I'm no uh, bird person per se, but that's one that we didn't see. Um, but, uh, you know, normally, um, well, here's another one that I didn't think about. The turkeys are gonna start um, puffing up and gobbling and the males are gonna be strutting around and, <laughs> and showing their stuff off pretty quick. Can't That's wait. really neat, and you can see that right in the Bloomington Center behind glass. I, I see them in my own neighborhood. <laughs> they, they tend to be uh, very populous around there. Right. Um, you mentioned the feeders. Has there ever been talk of like putting uh, digital cameras on them so people can look to see them online? That no, but that's a great idea. <laughs> Because I know we've seen it with like eagles' nests and such, and I think you know you you could serve the public that can't get there and say, you know, let's see what birds are feeding today. So something to something to take home, and if it makes money for you, I'll take a cut. There you <laughs> go. All right. <laughs> so, Terry, you got anything that's for him? That, well, my uh, uh, brother-in-law and nephews have just they bought a, an old farm and they're setting it up for deer hunting and they've got trail cameras up and then they can they can view the trail camera on their phones okay so they'll show me deer that have gone by and stuff so i i think you can do that on that that same deal would be um, i'm not sure i'm going to be trucking up through their uh and again that's well you said you didn't bring your dog in today because i'm quite allergic to that but uh two nephews have two dogs and of course they're hunters, so they'd be there all the time. Oh yeah. So it'd be much safer for me to watch it on my phone than it would there be you go. to actually yeah. go there. So that sounds like it'd be kind of fun. Yeah. And I think those eagle cams are interesting too, and you yeah. can watch that. Then they have uh, something with a, a bear, a bear, a, a bear Duluth or something like that. Yeah, or in and that area, the cloquet or area, a den or something like that. Yeah. Yep. The yeah. DNR does have those. And Eagle, uh, I'm not sure where the Eagle camera, is that through the um, Audubon Society or yeah, and the I, Rapture I Center? I believe it's like sure. in the lower Minnesota uh, River Valley. Valley. Okay. So. so gentlemen, we're about out of time. I wanna thank Dave for coming in and thank Terry for uh, helping me out today. Yep. But before we go, any anything you wanna say about where you are and what you guys are doing for people? I think the biggest thing that we can do for uh, anybody um, is just to let you know that, well, this dear friend of mine on my left, mm -hmm. you're right. Um, is that, did I say they were right? Yeah. Is, uh, and, and Charlie, I don't know you well, but I know that um, the obstacles that you guys have paved the way for us mm -hmm and to let us know that um, if you can do it, anybody can do it. That's the way I look at it. That's cool. All right, again, I wanna thank Dave Guzzi, Terry Hansen, I'm Charlie Bros. You've been watching Disability Perspective. We'll see y'all next time.